I would say the best of the best in this field, the CPP field, are here. Why not come here, meet them, learn from them, do it in person, as we know that's a lot better than getting to do things virtually. So where else can you come somewhere where all the experts are? All right, thank you guys all so much. My name, let's see. My name is Lexington Brill, currently a senior at the University of Chicago, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about microbenchmarking and Murphy's Law, where pretty much everything that can go wrong will probably go wrong. Um, so, to start, why do you want a microbenchmark? Well, first of all, what is microbenchmarking? This is when you're measuring something on the order of nanoseconds, a very small operation, even cycles. For example, if you have a dirty cache message and you want to time how long it takes from the cache coherency protocol to send this over UPI for Intel chips. Um, and if you want to use this to optimize your code, this should be the very, very last thing you do because you're gonna get way better performance optimizing other things first. But also, it's great to analyze tools in your toolbox. If you have a bunch of things, uh, like uh, operations you can use, it's great to know how long each one of them is gonna take. That way, when you are posed with a problem, you know what best tool to use to, to solve it. So the most important part about benchmarking is measurements. That's, that's the goal of the benchmarks, in order to measure things and compare them to each other. However, by measuring, you are incurring the observer effect, which is saying that when you um, are doing a measurement, you are actually going to be impacting the result based off of that measurement that you're performing. Uh, the most common way that measurements are done is with um, the STID Chrono High Resolution Clock. This is what Google Benchmark uses, but it requires a clock monotonic system call. Um, and since we're incurring the observer effect here, we want to really minimize this effect. And what, what, what can work better here is the timestamp counters. Um, the two that we use are RDTSC and RDTSCP, with the latter being out of order execution protected, as well as giving the process ID. And these use the top frequency cycles uh, for the CPU in order to set the rates that the um, cycles are going at. So in order to make sure that what you're benchmarking is actually aligned with this, you wanna do things such as disabling P states, C states, turbo boost, thermal throttling, or anything that will keep your CPU from max frequency. So it's a scary world out there. How do you, how do you stay safe? You want to uh, turn optimization off. This is really good for making sure that dead code is not gonna be eliminated if you're benchmarking a write and you're not doing a read. That code's out of there with the, with the optimizer. Um, however, it's not always gonna protect you from things like out of order execution, so you should still check your code, see if you need memory fences, see if you need to toss something like a volatile keyword in there to make sure your operations are actually happening when you want them to happen. You also want to minimize overhead in your measurement loop. Let's say you're benchmarking something like uh, an L2 cache read, and after that first run, it's an L1 cache read, so you have to find a way to make sure that you're still reading from the L2, and by doing this work, you're gonna be adding more code that you need to deal with. And what do you do when you wanna see what uh, a little bit of code is doing to your program? Benchmark it, figure out how long it's taking, then subtract that from your other measurements. You can also use statistics. You see if your errors are normally distributed and see the order of your variance. If your variance is on similar or same order as your measurements themselves, you probably wanna take everything you measured with a grain of salt. And also, look for quantized results. If you can cluster your results into different time groups, you're probably going through P states and C states, and your uh, CPU are probably getting locked in at certain um, frequencies, so you wanna keep that in mind. Additionally, 99th percentile measurements are just as important as mean, because it, it really explains to you, when you're having a bad day, how bad is that day gonna be for your code? So the main takeaways are I want you guys to control as many variables as possible, things through measurement, cache effects, compile optimization, hardware, all of these things you wanna really lock down in order to make sure your operations are getting measured as accurately as possible. Interpret your results, read them, do they make sense? If maybe uh, an L2 cache read is taking 30 to 40 cycles, that seems like it might be twice as longish as you want it to be, so maybe get more data, do things like read two cache lines instead of one, see if it's about twice as long, a little more, a little less. If not, you might wanna use a tool such as Perf in order to dig deeper into it. And that's all I have for you guys. Happy benchmarking.